okay today it's good to be with you hi folks i uh, hope you're okay it's good to be with you uh we're looking at the living christ and the four gospels by rw dale uh, which is an old apologetics book written um, over a hundred and so years a um, hundred and twenty years ago at least and we're looking at lecture nine uh, by rw dale um on tation now in historical jesus studies um uh, tation is a very important figure in learning about jesus uh, because of uh some of the editing that he did he edited the four gospels um so we're going to read uh the chapter on tation and um and talk about what i'm reading uh, R.W. Dale says, in his address to the Greeks, Tatian tells us that he was born in Assyria, that in his youth and early manhood he was instructed in the laws, the literature, and the religious beliefs of the Greeks, that he travelled in many lands and became familiar with the customs and philosophies of many races of men, that he carefully considered their religious rites and was initiated into their mysteries. According to Eusebius, he was a sophist, a professional rhetorician, and a lecturer with distinction on various branches of Greek learning. At last, to use his own phrase, he withdrew into himself that if possible he might discover the truth. While, we, while he was earnestly engaged in this inquiry, he happened to meet with certain barbaric writings, as he calls them, some of which were more ancient than Homer that the earliest of the writers who were honored by the greeks are more ancient than even their legendary heroes the sacred books of the jews attracted him by the simplicity of their style by their naturalness and sincerity of their writers by the knowledge of future events which was shown in their prophecies and by their admirable moral precepts and by their teaching concerning the unity and supremacy of god in christ he found the fulfillment of jewish hope and so he became a christian uh, it's disputed uh, whether he became an Orthodox Christian. Um, he, he seemed to apostatize in his later life, so we'll come back to that in a minute. About the middle of the second century, he was in Rome. At this time, he was intimately associated with Justin Martyr and was a conspicuous defender of the Christian faith. He tells us that Christians, a philosopher, was the bitter enemy of both of them and plotted their death. During the life of Justin, his opinions were orthodox, but after the death of his friend, his name was associated with some serious heresies. He came to hold severe views concerning the evil of the flesh and denounced marriage as a crime against the higher life of the soul. He was also charged with adopting some of the speculations of Valentius and the Gnostic. When he left Rome, he appears to have traveled eastward and his last years were probably spent among his, his countrymen on the banks of the Euphrates. Although he regarded Justin with affectionate admi ad admiration, the two men were very unlike. Justin can never wholly forget the charm of his old philosophical studies and speaks with sympathy of those who by adventurous paths of, of speculation were endeavoured to find their way to the secret of the universe and to the life of God. Tatian, who was probably a more learned man than Justin, assails every form of human philosophy with fierce contempt. Pythagoras, Plato and Aristotle, Heraclitus and Diogenes, he scorns and ridicules them all. He exalts in the traditions, some of them quite untrustworthy, of their infirmities and vices, and he mocks at their claims to wisdom. A very few years ago, it would have been necessary to say that of all his numerous writings, only his address to the Greeks remains. But to the astonishment and delight of scholars, the most important and valuable of his lost books has been recently recovered. The story of the recovery is so interesting that I will venture to tell it, says W. Dale. He goes on, in several ancient authors, there are references to what is called, described as Tatian's diacetron. Eusebius says that Tatian composed a sort of connection and compilation, I know not how, of the Gospels and called it the diacetron. This work is current in some quarters, even to the present day. Epiphanius about Epiphanius about AD 315 to AD 43 informs us that the Diatasserus and Gospel 
said to have been composed by imitation, it is called by some the gospel according to the Hebrews. In 5453, Theodoret, bishop of Cyrus, Cyrus near the Euphrates, Euphrates writes, Etation composed the gospel, which is called the Diatassaton, cutting out the genealogies and such other passages show the Lord to have been born of the seed of David according to the flesh. This work was in use not only among persons belonging to his sect, but also among those who followed the apostolic doctrine, as they did not perceive the mischief of the composition, but used the book in awesome simplicity on account of its brevity. And I myself found more than 200 such copies held in respect in the churches of our parts. All these I collected and put away and replaced them by the Gospels of the four evangelists. This testimony is important, says Dale. Theodora knew the book had been carefully examined it and his words clearly imply that it was a compilation of the four Gospels with certain passages cancelled which were inconsistent which were consistent with Tatian's heresies concerning the necessary evil of the flesh. There is also a reference to the Diatassatron in the doctrine of Adia, a kind of romance written in Syriac professor to give an account of introduction of Christianity into Edessa. It contains the legend of Ab Abgarus, the king of Edessa, who when suffering from an incurable disease is said to have heard the miracles of our Lord and to have sent a message to him appealing to his pity and imploring him to come to Edessa. The Romance gives the following account of the worship of the church, which was found in Edessa after our Lord's resurrection. Quote, this is Hemphill. The Romance was first published in Dr. Uh, Curriton's Ancient Syriac Documents, 1864. Quote, administered in the church, which... Adeus had built at the order of the command of King Abga, and they were furnished from, from what belonged to the king, to his nobles, with some things for the house of God and others for the supply of the poor. But a large multitude of people assembled day by day and came to the prayers of the service and to the reading of the Old Testament and the and the new of the day of the new of and the new of the day Tesseron. Well, end of quote. The story told in the doctrine of Adai is wholly untrustworthy, but it shows that the diatassaton must have been in common use in the Syriac church when the book was written. There is another testimony from a Syriac bishop, Bar Salabi, who lived at the end of the 12th century. He says that the diatassaton quotation began with the opening verse of John's Gospel. He also says that the Ephraim at the Syria about AD 308 to AD 373, theologian, poet, and orator Saint wrote a commentary on it. Tatian, the disciple of Justin, the philosopher of Martyr, selected and patched together from the four Gospels and constructed a Gospel which he called the Diatassaton, that is, miscellaneous, on his work. Mar Ephraim wrote an exposition, and its commencement was, in the beginning, was the word. This was about all that was known in England of the Diatassaton when Dr. Lyford wrote the article on Tatian, which appeared in the Commentary Contemporary Review for May 1877. And the evidence did not satisfy those who were willing to believe that as early as the middle of the second century or little later, our four Gospels had not only been written but had secured a so uncontested a supremacy that even a heretic like Tatian recognized their authority and used them as the basis of his narrative of our Lord's early history. Of the witness whose testimony has been quoted, it is at least doubtful whether Eusebius had seen the book. It is certain, I think, that Epiphanius had not seen it, and the great writers of the West knew nothing of it. Victor of Capu, indeed, who flourished about the middle of the 6th century, had met with the harmony of the Gospels and supposed that it was the one which, according to Eusebius, had been composed by Tatian. But Victor calls it the Diapente, not the Diatassatron, and it begins with the first verse of Luke instead of the first verse of John. It was only from th the three Syrian witnesses, Theodoret and the writer of the Doctrine of Adi, 
and Baal Salabi that any clear satisfactory evidence could be derived. But Dr. Lyford maintained with great force that the traditional view of the church was sound, that Tatian had compiled a story of our Lord's life from the four Gospels and had called it the Diatasotron. If Ephraim's commentary on the Diatasotron had been preserved, the controversy might have been closed, for the commentary would certainly show the general structure and outline of the book, and would probably contain many quotations from it. Unfortunately, early in the last century, a ship laden with ancient manuscripts for Pope Clement VI sank in the Nile, and many of Ephraim's writings were lost, among them perhaps his lecture on the Diatasotron. To recover the lost book from the bed of the Nile was impossible. It perished long ago, but might not some other copy be still in existence. Strangely enough, at the very time that Dr. Lightfoot was writing his article and building up his laborious argument, he had Ephraim's lecture on his own bookshelves, and they had been there for several years. An Armenian translation of them had been published in 1836 by the Mekitarist monks who are settled on the island of San Lazaro in the lagoon between Lido and Venice. These monks have had a remarkable history and have done a remarkable work. Mechita, the founder of the order, was an Armenian and was born in 1676 in Siwa, the ancient Sebastian, a town near the source of the Halles, on the borders of Pontus and Cappadocia. In 1699, he was ordained priest and came to be possessed with a passion for promoting both the intellectual and spiritual welfare of his countrymen. He went to Constantinople and formed an association to carry out his, his design. Difficulties arose which led him to transfer his new society to Morden in the Moria, which at that time belonged to Venice. Here he and his companions worked for 14 years until 1715. The Moria was co co recovered by the Turks and Machita's convent was broken up. He then received from the government of Venice the island of San Lazzaro, and from that time, the Venetian convent had been the mother house of the order and the center of Armenian culture. Other congregations had been founded in Vienna, at Trieste, and several places in Hungary. The Algemein Zittung, December 17, 1850, bears a strong testimony to the great services which the Mechataris have rendered to their fellow countrymen. It says, when one takes a near review of their labors at Vienna and Venice, one is amazed at the powerful influence which the literary activity of these learned monks exert on the Armenian nation scattered throughout the East. The reviews, the books, the numerous translations of works on history, geography, philosophy, natural science, and voyages and travels, which are printed in the Macarius Press of Vienna and Venice, are carried far beyond Persia to the banks of the Indies and the Ganges and have everywhere called forth among them Armenians the desire of knowledge and a taste for reading and set on foot a literary movement which was before entirely dormant in a people till lately essentially and exclusively commercial. Among the treasures of the library, the monks possessed two 12th century MS of an Ar Armenian translation made apparently in the 5th century from the Syriac of Ephraim's commentary on a gospel harmony. In 1836, they published an Armenian edition of Ephraim's work in four volumes, Octavio, and the commentary is contained in the second volume. Quote, I for some years, says Dr. Lightfoot, writing in 1889, possessed a copy of this work, and the thought had more than once crossed my mind that possibly it might throw light on Ephraim's mode of dealing with the gospels, as I knew that it contained noughts on St. Paul's epistles or some portion of them. I did not, however, then possess sufficient knowledge of the Arminian to sift its contents, but I hoped to investigate the matter when I had mastered enough of the language." End of quote. But even without knowledge of Arminian, Dr. Lyford might have known the contents of the Ephraim's lectures before he published his article on May 1877. For in 1876, a Latin translation had been published in Venice as early as 1841, one of the monks, Father Uke, 
had translated the lectures into Latin, but the translation had remained in MS in the library of San Lazzaro. At last, it somehow came to the knowledge of Dr. George Mosinger, Professor of Biblical Studies at Salzburg, and it was placed in his hand with one of the MS from which the Arminian text had been printed. He revised the translation and published it, as I have said, in 1876. Dr. Weiss, who wrote a series of honourable articles on the Diatasotron in the Expositor for 1881 and 1882, justify remarks that considering the immense importance of Ephraim's work, it is most curious point that it should have been before the world for nearly five years in a Latin translation and should have remained practically unnoticed by any of the laborious scholars of Germany. He had such an ancient might well lead us to think that our materials for criticism are beginning to overpower us and that some of our best treasures may be hidden. For us, like need needles in a haystack. End of quote. It's also curious that the importance of the discovery was at last brought home to the scholar of Germany and England by an American theologian, Dr. Ezra Abbott, who called attention to it in his book on authorship of the fourth gospel, published in 1880. The lectures, as Dr. Weiss prefers to call them, the uh, scholia or of Ephraim, demonstrated that the diatastrophe notation published soon after the middle of the second century, was continuous narrative of our Lord's life consisting of a close welding together of the four Gospels. How much of the contents of the Gospels station committed, omitted, could not be confidently inferred from Ephraim's lectures, for the lectures are not a continuous commentary. Out it was certain that Tatian used all the four and no other. But the romantic story of the Diatasotron is not yet finished. The discovery of Ephraim's lectures had been followed by the discovery of the Diatasotron itself. 150 years ago, Stephen Evodius, a Samanai, a Syrian Maronite, and a member of a family of famous Orientalists, assisted his uncle Joseph Alaisius in his work at the Vatican Library. And he published, among other learned books and accounts of the Oriental manuscripts contained in the library. In this, there is a brief notice of, of an Arabic MS professing to be a translation of the Diatasotron of Tatian. Brief accounts of it were also given by Archibald and the younger Rosenmuller. Archibald, a Swedish scholar who was famous for his runic, Coptic, Phoenician and ancient Egyptian learning, died about 70 years ago. The younger Rosenmuller, professor of Oriental literature at Leipzig, died some years later. But the accounts which these three eminent scholars had given of the MS were meagre and unsatisfactory. The discussions which were occasioned by the publication of Ephraim's lectures recalled attention to these notices of the MS. And Sizer, one of the scribes of the Vatican, promised in 1883 to give a fuller and more accurate description of it, and if he had the leisure to publish it in full. Circumstances delayed the fulfillment of both promises, but in the year 1886, An eminent dignitary among the Catholic Coptics was vi uh, visiting Rome and Cicisa uh, showed him the Tatian MS. He said that a similar one was in possession of a number of his communion in Egypt. In the course of the summer, this second MS, which is described as beautifully written and illuminated in gold colours, was sent to Rome, and in 1886 it was published. It contains notes at the beginning and end in which it is described as an Aramaic translation of Tatian's Diatrasoton. Made from the Syriac, it gives the name of the translators and also the names of the writers of the Syriac MS from which the translation was made. The translator lived in the early part of the 11th century, the writer of the Syriac MS at the end of the 19th, 9th century. The Egyptian MS supplied passages which are wanting in the imperfect MS in the Vatican and it is free from the interpolations which are recognisable in, the, in that MS. The date of this translation shows that six centuries after Theodoret had collected 200 copies of the Diatasotron from the churches of his diocese and replaced them with copies of the four Gospels, there were Assyrian Christians who still clung to the book from which their fathers in the second century had learned the story of Christ. But their country was under the 
Sarsian yoke and they had forgotten the mother tongue of their race and they were speaking the language of their conquerors and so the diatasoran was translated into Arabic. In its contents and in the order which the facts of our Lord's life are narrated, the Arabi Arabic diatasoran is practically identical with the Syriac diatasoran which was used by Ethereum. Except in the four instances, the order in which the passage of the Gospels are cited by Ephraim in the order which they occur is the harmony is the in the Ar Arabic harmony. It begins with seeing that begins with five verses of the Gospel of John. Then follows the account of the birth of John the Baptist contained in the first chapters of Luke. Then the appearance of the angel Joseph to told by Matthew, then the story of our Lord's birth, the appearance of the angels to the shepherds, the prophecy of Simeon and of Anna as given by Luke, then the visit of the Magi, the flight into Egypt, the slaughter of the children of Bethlehem, and the return of Joseph and Mary to Nazareth as told by Matthew. From this point, Ephraim passes to the great words in the first chapter of John, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us through Moses is the law, but it's truth through Jesus our Lord. Grace and tooth truth came through jesus the jews sent john and say to him who art thou and he confessed saying i am not the christ they say to him art thou elias he says no but the diatasotron after the slaughter of the children and after the return to nazareth gives luke's account of our lord's visit to jerusalem when he was 12 years of age this is followed by a brief statement of the beginning of the ministry of john the baptist and then follows John chapter 1, 7 to 28, which contains the passages just quoted from Ephraim. In Ephraim, singularly enough, the comments on our Lord's visit to Jerusalem in his whole boyhood occurred after the comments on his testimony of the Baptist. This is one of the four cases in which Ephraim's order differs from the order of the Arabic diatasotron. Until the story reaches the selection of the twelve apostles, Tatian shows considerable freedom in his agreement of the incident. But later, this, and beginning with, with the Sermon on the Mount, he practically follows Matthew's order until he comes to the Last Supper. Passages from Mark, Luke, and John introduced at successive stages of the narrative on what principles he determines their place. It is difficult to discover. Why, for instance, should he be given the account of the visit of Nicodemus to our Lord in John 3, 1, 21, after the story of the barren fig tree, and for far on towards the close of our Lord's ministry. In this singular order, Ephraim agrees with the Arabic text. But while it is apparent that the contents and the arrangement of the Arabic diatasotron are practically identical with the contents and arrangements of the Syriac diatasotron used by Ephraim, the readings of the translation show the f that the text had been revised and Ephraim's quotations represent a more ancient text than the represented by the Arabic translation. And now having told the story of the discovery of these two ancient books, the diatasotron and the lectures upon it, I have, to show, I have to show their value in relation to the question of the early origin and the historical trustworthy of our four Gospels. Tatian was a man of intellectual vigour and a scholar. There was fierceness in him and obstinacy and intolerance, but his address to the Greeks gives one the impression that he had courage and incorruptible honesty. He was a friend of Justin and he had travelled far and had seen the Christians in many lands, and what for many immediate purpose is as important as any of the facts which I have just recited, he was a heretic. The date at which he left Rome is uncertain. It may have been early AD 150 or even earlier. It can hardly have been as late as AD 170. There is something attractive in the suggestion that although he believed that on some grave subjects, the faith, and the practice of the Orthodox churches were at fault, he cared more for the rescue of his countrymen from heathenism than for the correction of the theological and ethical errors of those who had found eternal redemption in Christ. Whatever may have been his motives, he returned to the land of his birth and preached the gospel to men who had not yet received it. He found it necessary to give his converts the story of Christ in their own tongue, and he took the story as it is given in the four gospels. With this characteristic audacity, he cut out the genealogies which he regarded as, in as inconsistent with the true conception of the greatness and glory of Christ. 
and he did not shrink from tampering with the text of those passages which he retained but the gospels which he used and the greater part of which he transferred to his own narratives were the gospels of matthew mark luke and john and he used no other why did he use all the four why did he use these alone he had broken with the orthodox churches and was beyond their control it was from himself that the churches for it was from himself that the churches for those who his narrative was prepared and received the christian faith he was free absolutely free to give any gospel that he chose i ask again why did he give them a gospel constructed from the four gospels which are still in our hands there is an obvious answer to this question and i think that the obvious answer is the only reasonable one when he left rome these four gospels had a unique place in the christian church of all the lands he knew they contained the real and authentic story of our lord's life he might think that the genealogies had no right to take place in the first gospel and the third and he thought it expedient to modify some expressions which might lead his converts into theological errors but if he had to give his converts a narrative of our lord's life it was a matter of course that he should give them the story that had been told by matthew mark luke and john this was the trustworthy story he could give no other and although he had tampered with the text his diatasotron had so little in in it to create orthodox suspicion and contained the nar narrative in so convenient a form that ephraim the the glory of the syrian church expounded it only 13 years ago the evidence which could be alleged in support of the traditional theory that tatian diatasum was composed of our four gospels though in my judgment sufficient was scanty to christian apologists tatian's address to the greek contained clear, contained clear proof that he knew the gospel of john the following passages seem to place this beyond doubt god is a spirit and this is the saying the darkness comprehended it not the light etc follow you the glory of god all things have been made by him apart from him he made no thing but the proof was declared to be inadequate the recovery of ephraim's lectures and the arabic translation of the diatasotron has wholly changed the condition of the controversy the tatian the friend of justin martin knew our four gospels and that is diatasotron he worked them into a continuous narrative is now finally demonstrated a couple of more pages now. There is one more chapter to complete the story of this curious work, and you may be interested in hearing it. I have already told you that Victor Acapu, the author of the several commentaries on the books of the Old and New Testament and of work now lost on the true method of determining Easter, met with a Latin, a Latin MS containing a harmony of the four Gospels. That was about AD 540. The MS had no title, but finding in Eusebius the Tatian had constructed a diatasotron, he attributed it to Tatian. After the MS had been copied under the, his direction, he corrected it and then published it with other books of the New Testament. Till recently, it was the general opinion of scholars that Victor was in error in supposing that Tatian was its original author. One piece of evidence seemed to be decisive. Tatian's diatasotron was said to have begun with the first verses of the Gospel of John. In, in Victor's harmony, these verses are preceded by four verses from the Gospel of Luke. But the publication of Ephraim's lectures on the diatasotron and of the diatasotron itself has shown that Victor was right. In order in which the order in which the contents of the four gospels are arranged by Tatian is followed with inconsiderable variation in the Latin harmony of the victor harmony of victor this order is so remarkable i might say so wayward and eccentric that the coincidence could not have been accidental victor corrected the latin text of the harmony and modified it in other ways the genealogies for example and some other passages were probably inserted by him but the harmony even as it stands after victor's revision is substantially tatian's the harmony published by victor tatian's harmony had a great place in the history of the christian faith in europe there is a copy of it in fulda in hess castle which according to tradition was in the hands of boniface the apostle of germany when he suffered martyrdom 
if it's supposed that when the body of the martyred saint was brought to folder the copy of the gospels which he loved was brought with it if the tradition is true and there is said to be internal evidence that the book belonged to the boniface the great missionary who in the eighth century evangelized the heathen races on the banks of the rhine used a narrative of our lord's life which originally been prepared by the heretic Tatian for converts from heathenism on the banks of euphrates in the ninth century it was translated in the dialect of the eastern franks and it appears to have been the basis of poetical life of our lord which was written for the southern franks and which had in, intended to be sung to the heart in the same century it furnished the substance of the um hill the end which is described by its editor as the greatest monument of the old saxon language in evidence for 30 years, Charles Maine had endeavoured to compel the Saxons to accept the Christian gospel. They abhorred his faith, but could not resist his arms. They submitted to baptism and acknowledgement of the supremacy of the Franks rather than the confession of the authority of grace of Christ. But they remained heathen still, and they preserved the superstitions of their ancestors by sing singing in the depths of their forest their old songs in honour of their old gods. When Louise the pious succeeded his father louis the pious succeeded the, it, the succeeded his father he determined on a kindlier and more effective policy he, he had not the story of christ a greater charm than the legends of wooden and of thor if the christian story could be told in song by a poet of genius it might perhaps win the hearts of the wild resolute men who while they bore the christian name regarded christ with indifference or hatred as the god of their conquerors at the crest of the king hilland was written a noble poem telling the story of our lord as it is told in the harmony of victor according to its editor it breathed the spirit of the old saxon nation and customs and the diction sometimes rises to a very high pitch of poetic power and beauty there is no doubt he adds that the benign and beautiful doctrine of christianity by shooting the ears of ignorant heathen would in this way find a ready access to their hearts. Coming to the end now. It is a wonderful story. The diatasaron was prepared by a heretic in the second century for the instruction of converts from heathenism in assyria in the eighth century and the ninth converts from heathenism the heart of germany learned from it the story of christ scholars lamented that it had been lost among other treasures of the east and when within the last few years it was discovered they learned that it had been known in the west for 1300 years there was ruggedness fierceness intolerance in the characterization but we may venture to hope that there was also genuine and even passionate love for his lord in the history could he have foreseen it of that story of our lord's life which he prepared for his countrymen he would have found abundant consolation for all the distrust and hatred with which he was regarded on account of his heresies the service which he rendered to men for christ's sake christ is glorious honored well uh, I, I just think that some of the things about what RW, what R. Dale has written there, I thought it was excellent, uh, an excellent essay. I just want to bring a couple of things out. Uh, skeptics will often say that the Gospels are not historically reliable, that they were too far away written to give us any genuine historical account. And what we see here is if... Uh, Tatian wrote the Diatasaron, which is ed the editing of the gospel, then it means that the gospels were already seen in the first century as valuable and important. And uh, that is a powerful argument against any of these skeptics who would pour scorn and question whether the, the gospels and even the New Testament is historically reliable. So, yeah, I just loved reading that. I loved thinking about Tatian and and love talking about the early church fathers and and also the characters of these ancient times um
but what a resource and uh, what a great scholar JB Lightfoot is because he um, recognized that Tatian's book was around, would probably be around, and eventually it was found. And uh, I just want to say that it's important for us um, to realize that our faith is based on good, solid evidence. This is evidence that the Gospels were in use in the first century. Here's a heretic doing a harmonization of the Gospels, not of the Gnostic Gospels, but of the four Gospels, showing you that they believed that the four Gospels had authority. So I'm going to go now, and I hope that you enjoyed this. I enjoy these historical uh, uh, videos, and I just hope that they've been a blessing to you and encouraged you. And um, so thank you for coming, and God bless you.